Good day and welcome back to the class on investment analysis and portfolio management. Remember, this is lecture number 31 and we are two-thirds of the way past our talk on investment analysis and the subject. Now, we have been talking at length about different aspects of uh, investments and we've been talking about bonds recently. In the past uh, lectures, we talked about bonds and we talked about duration and what was duration about. It was a measure of the effective maturity of a bond. Remember, once again, just in the beginning of the lecture, bonds duration is different from maturity. But there is an exception, the exception being a zero coupon bond in which duration and maturity are the same. So, we look at durations as one of the most important factors to look at. Now, remember, we told you bonds, durations and maturities are not the same, except for zero coupon bonds, except in other bonds, maturity is much greater than a duration. Because you have coupon rates on the bonds, we take maturity or the yield to maturity as the measure for looking at things, but duration is a measure of what? Do you remember? We talked that duration is a measure of interest rate risk. We were talking about bonds and what sort of risks there are. So interest rate risk was one of the factors that we considered and it takes effect of both the coupon rate and maturity changes in bond prices. That was one of the uses of duration. Another was matching the duration with assets and liabilities of the financial institution. That is what we use duration for. So we look at duration for interest rate risks and we also look at the uh, asset and liability aspect of durations usage. Also, Immunization of interest rate risk is another factor that we look at. Then we can look at the financial institutions use immunization as a means to manage assets and liability. Also, we understand that duration can be used as the target date. Immunization can be used to lock in a fixed rate of return for some investment horizons. Ye a duration ka impact price ke upar, bond ke price ke upar, aap ki samaj, duration ki or maturity of a bond ke upar, is ka is li important hai samaj na, because you are then able to look at what is the real value of a bond. You are able to put a price on the bond, ki is price pe, hume ye bond free dhe na chahi. Ye to baat ho gai aap ki duration ki uses. Now, bohut sare rules hain durations. The number of rules, the important thing about rule number one is that the duration of a zero coupon bond equals to its time to maturity. Then we remember talked about holding maturity constant. Just to remind you, holding maturity constant, a bond's duration is higher when the coupon rate is lower. And in rule number three, we talked that Holding coupon rates constant, a bond's duration generally increases with its time to maturity. And rule number four, holding all factors constant, the duration of the coupon bond is higher when the bond's yield to maturity is lower. Kya conclude ki humne duration? What did we infer from all this talk about duration? We concluded that to obtain maximum price volatility, Investors should choose bonds with longer duration or longest duration. And remember, duration is additive. Also, duration measures volatility, which wasn't the only aspect of risk in bonds. Ye humne conclude kiya tha apni durations ki jo bhi humne discussions ki thi. Ye liye important hai ki duration add hota jayega and we choose uh, bonds with the longest duration for our better and diversification of portfolios. Portfolio means we eh, bonds ko easily include karte hain. Ye zara sa uh, balance lati hai humare risky assets jo ke stocks hain, and this becomes a lesser 
रिस्की और रिस्कलेस एसेट टू बी इंक्लूडेड इन अ बॉन्ड यहाँ पे हमने एक और टर्म यूज की थी कन्वेक्सिटी और जब हम यील टू मेच्योरिटी की बात कर रहे थे तो हमने अंडरस्टैंड किया था देर इज अ प्राइस यील रिलेशनशिप विच इज कन्वेक्स तो इट रेफर्स टू द डिग्री टू विच ड्यूरेशन चेंजेस एज द यील टू मेच्योरिटी चेंजेस तो जैसे जैसे ये ड्यूरेशन चेंज होंगे इस तरह यील भी चेंज होगी और फिर आपकी जो लाइन है वो कन्वेक्स हो जाएगी सो प्राइस यील रिलेशनशिप इज कन्वेक्स ड्यूरेशन इक्वेजन अज्यूम्स अ लीनियर रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन प्राइस एंड यील ये हमने कन्वेक्सिटी का डिस्कस किया था इशू इन आर प्रीवियस लेक्चर एंड कन्वेक्सिटी इज लार्जेस्ट फॉर लो कूपॉन्स लॉन्ग मेच्योरिटी बॉन्ड्स एंड लो यील टू मेच्योरिटी कन्वेक्सिटी इज दिस इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन कन्वेक्सिटी एंड प्राइस टू यील वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट प्राइस volatility and relationship to bonds so we talk that bond prices are inversely related to bond yields jo bhi bond yields hain uske sath aapki price ki inverse relationship also the price volatility of a long term bond remember when we talk about bonds we talking about long term so price volatility of a long term bond is greater a long term bonds price volatility is greater than that of a short term bond ये इंपॉर्टेंट है इसमें हमने कूपन रेट को कांस्टेंट रखना है और प्राइस वॉलिटिलिटी ऑफ अ लो कूपन बॉन्ड इज ग्रेटर व्हेन हाई कूपन रेट इज देयर बट वी होल्ड मेच्योरिटी कांस्टेंट तो किसी एक फैक्टर में हम मेच्योरिटी को कांस्टेंट रखते हैं और दूसरे एस्पेक्ट में हम यील को कांस्टेंट रखते हैं लेट्स कंक्लूड आर ऑल द स्टॉक ऑन बॉन्ड्स बिकॉज वी टॉक अ लॉट ऑन बॉन्ड्स सो इसकी क्या हमने कंक्लूजन किए हैं एक तो हमने ये कंक्लूड किया कि बॉन्ड प्राइसेस आर इन्वर्सली रिलेटेड टू बॉन्ड व्यू दूसरा प्राइस वॉलिटिलिटी ऑफ अ लॉन्गर मेच्योरिटी सिक्योरिटी इज लार्जर देन अ शॉर्टर मेच्योरिटी हमने ये भी इसमें समराइज किया कि प्राइस वॉलिटिलिटी ऑफ अ लो कूपन सिक्योरिटी इज लार्जर देन दैर ऑफ अ हाई कूपन सिक्योरिटी वी ऑल्सो डिस्कस कि किस चीज़ के ऊपर एंड वॉट डज प्राइस वॉलिटिलिटी ऑफ अ बॉन्ड डिपेंड ऑन तीन चीज़ें थी नंबर वन एक मेच्योरिटी थी दूसरी कूपन था और तीसरा जील टू मेच्योरिटी इन तीन फैक्टर्स के ऊपर प्राइस वॉलिटिलिटी ऑफ अ बॉन्ड डिपेंड करती है कूपन रेट द मेच्योरिटी एंड द जील टू मेच्योरिटी दीज थ्री आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट और जो भी अप्रॉक्सीमेट चेंज आता है अप्रॉक्सीमेट परसेंट चेंज आता है इन प्राइस ऑफ बॉन्ड्स वो भी इंपॉर्टेंट है टू बी गेट इन इट्स अप्रॉक्सीमेट परसेंटेज चेंज इन द प्राइस ऑफ बॉन्ड फॉर अ चेंज इन द यील्ड वी मस्ट वी सिंपली मल्टीप्लाई द चेंज ऑफ यील्ड टू द प्राइस ऑफ द बॉन्ड दिस इज लीनियर अप्रॉक्सीमेशन दैट वी मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड एंड इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस गुड फॉर स्मॉल चेंज ज़्यादा बड़ी चेंजेस जहन में रखें फ्रैक्शनल और डेसिमल चेंजेस से ही बहुत बड़ा इम्पैक्ट आ जाता है ऑन द रिटर्न एंड जील्ड वी नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट होल नंबर वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट बिगर नंबर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट द फ्रैक्शनल नंबर सो दिस हेल्प इन जो भी स्मॉल चेंजेस फ्रैक्शनल चेंजेस आती हैं आपकी बॉन्ड जील्ड्स में इट इज अ लीनर अप्रॉक्सीमेशन तो ये अप्रॉक्सीमेट परसेंटेज चेंज इन बॉन्ड जील्ड इज लुक एट विद द smaller changes in bonds bonds jo hain it is important for us to know that we've now learned the basics of bonds well we realize that itni zyada koi ye complications nahi hai kyunki ye naye topics hain naye subjects hain naye issues hain to isme isliye ho sakta hai aapko thoda sa uh, grasp karne mein uh, zara dikkat mehsoos ho rahi ho but i can assure you just don't panic on the bond issues bonds are a little different than uh stocks so we talking about fixed income securities and when talking about fixed income securities to bonds jo hain usme aapko thoda sa different lagega kyunki hamari zyada studies those focused hoti hain on capital markets or capital markets mein hum focus karte hain on equities but we overlook the bond aspect actually bonds can give you a very good balance to your investment portfolio so just uh, looking at what we actually have been studying in bonds and how has the study of bonds helped us so we looked at bonds as kya hain ye cheeze iou use 
یہ بانڈز آر ایکچولی آئی او یوز دیٹ آئی او یو منی بانڈ کے ایک ایشور ہوگا اور ایک جس نے بائی کیا ہوگا تو اوبیسلی بانڈ ایشو کر ایشور جو ہے ایکچولی رائٹنگ یو آئی او یو نوٹ یو ہیو آئی او یوز دیز آر پرومسری نوٹس جو آپ ایک پرسکرائب کے ہم نے آپ کو یا میں نے آپ کو اتنے پیسے دینے اس تاریخ کو اور اس کے ساتھ اتنا میں نے آپ کو انٹرسٹ بھی دینا ہے تو آئی او یوز کا امپیکٹ ہوتا ہے بانڈس پہ تو بانڈس ٹیکنیکلی آر آئی او یوز اینڈ اٹ مینس وین یو بائنگ بانڈ یو ٹیکنیکلی لینڈنگ منی ٹو دا پرسن ہوز ایشو یو دی آئی او یو وچ از اے بانڈ وچ از دا ایشور کین بی اے گورنمنٹ آرگنائزیشن اور اے کارپوریشن تو آئی او یوز کی طرح آپ دیکھیں بانڈس یو لینڈنگ منی ٹو سم بڈی تو دیز آر فکسڈ انکم سیکیورٹیز and it is important to understand that fixed income securities there because the cash flow from them is determined it is fixed it is pre decided so you know what sort of cash flow is going to be coming into you while we talking about bonds as fixed income securities there's no ambiguity there's no variation yes there is variation in bonds but is generally speaking there is no variation in bonds income so cash flows are determined so اسٹاک مارکیٹ کا ہم نے کیا پڑھا تھا اسٹاک از ان اکوٹی اسٹاکس اکوٹیز ہیں بانڈز ڈیٹ ہے تو اسٹاک اکوٹی مارکیٹ کا حصہ بن جائیں گے بانڈ جو ہیں وہ ڈیٹ مارکیٹ کا حصہ بن جائیں گے تو یہ دو چیزیں ہیں دوسرا کہ بانڈز گورنمنٹ بھی ایشو کرتی ہے بانڈ پرائیویٹ آرگنائزیشن بھی ایشو کرتی ہیں بانڈ لسٹڈ کمپنیز بھی ایشو کر سکتی ہیں بانڈ پبلک لمیٹڈ کمپنیز بھی ایشو کر سکتی ہیں It will all depend who the issuer is. And remember, one of the ways we look at evaluating bonds is who the issuer is. Issuer ki kya credibility? Are we going to have money back from the issuer? Is the corporation reliable? And obviously, if it's the government, then it's not much to worry about. Bonds are characterized at the face value. Ya to face value ki baat karte hain, bonds ke wale se. یا ہم بات کرتے ہیں کوپون ریٹ کی یا میچورٹی کی یا ایشور کی یہ چار چیزیں جو ہیں یہ امپورٹنٹ ہے کہ فیس ویلیو کیا ہے اس کے اوپر ہمیں انٹرسٹ ریٹ کیا پر کوپن ملنا ہے یا اس کو ایشو کرنے والا کوئی ہے جو ابھی میں نے ذکر کیا تھا اب گورنمنٹ ہے کہ پرائیویٹ آرگنائزیشن ہے اور اس کا ٹائم فریم کیا ہے شارٹ ڈوریشن انٹرمیڈیٹ ڈوریشن اور لانگر ڈوریشن آئی پرسنلی recommend longest duration bonds but it will depend on what your requirements are so it is important for us to understand that yield is the rate of return you get on a bond ye coupon rate hai jo yield hogi aapki investment ke upar it will be the rate of return that you get on a bond plus yield is the rate of return that you get on a bond is understood but when prices go up yields go down and vice versa ظاہر ہے جب ایک ویلیو ایک اس کی بانڈ کی بڑھ رہی ہے تو آپ کی یلڈ کم ہو جائے گی بیکاز اٹ از ریلیٹڈ ٹو پرائسز یلڈ از ڈائریکٹ جب پرائس اوپر ہو جائے گی بانڈ کی یلڈ کم ہو جائے گی اگر پرائس نیچے آ جائے گی بانڈ کی تو یلڈ بڑھ جائے گی تو وی ہیو ٹو لک ایٹ واٹ پرائس از دا بانڈ بینگ سولڈ ایٹ انٹرسٹ ریٹ انٹرسٹ ریٹس کا بھی ایک امپیکٹ ہے آپ کے بانڈس کے اوپر اور وہ ویری سمپلی کہ اگر انٹرسٹ ریٹس رائز کریں تو اس کا بھی امپیکٹ نیگیٹو ہوگا بانڈ پرائسز کا کہ کیونکہ جب انٹرسٹ ریٹس بڑھ رہے ہیں دین دا پرائسز آف بانڈس ان دا مارکیٹ فال آن دی ادر ہینڈ اف انٹرسٹ ریٹس گو ڈاؤن ویل فائنڈ دیٹ پرائسز آف بانڈس ایکچولی ٹیک اے رائز دے رائز ان وین انٹرسٹ ریٹس فال بلس نوٹس And bonds are all fixed income securities, which we must understand. Now, when we were talking about the issuer, we saw that we feel the most comfortable feel karte when there is a sovereign guarantee. How do you have a sovereign guarantee? Sovereign guarantee would be a guarantee by the government that yes, we are going to you know, pay you up. And you do understand that government stay, country stay, sovereign state stay, corporations may evaporate, may liquidate, may... decapitate, may merge, uh, may go into bankruptcy. But generally speaking, governments tend to be more safer. Well, we have exceptions in some states that they go bankrupt. Governments go bankrupt as well. 
but uh, fortunately that hasn't happened in our place where we're living. So governments are considered safe. Government issuers are the safest and most popular, followed by municipal bonds and then corporate bonds. Municipal bonds, kya hai? Yeah, I told you in the beginning of the previous lectures that um, this culture has not developed, nahi hua, but individual cities, individual municipal corporations, city district governments can raise capital by issuing bonds. They have a legitimate right to issue bonds as well. We haven't, you know, taken up this probability. We tend to borrow it from the center, but we can raise capital provided we can get people to, you know, buy or lend money to the municipal corporations, the town committees, or just say city district governments. So it's not a big deal. It's not only the center, the federation that can raise capital by issuing bonds. The provinces can do the same. Cities can do the same. Towns can do the same. This is all depending on the credibility of the issuer. All corporate bonds, hain. corporate bonds, we issue ho sakte hain, but people can issue corporate bonds, companies can issue power bonds. So, technically speaking, to be very honest, bonds are not risk free. Yes, we said bonds are less riskier than stocks, but really, bonds are not really risk free. There is a certain element of risk. It is always possible, especially for corporate bonds, organizations, companies, firms, and it is possible that the borrower, the issuer of the bond may default on debt payments. There's just a slight possibility they might. So high risk, high yield bonds are known as what? Junk bonds. This name has been a very interesting one. Junk bonds give you high risk, but remember high yields as well. So. Uh, junk bond is sometimes a very fascinating way to get rich quick, but not the uh, the best of ideas. Now, we also must understand that these uh, capacities of bonds or the risk factor that is associated in bonds must be understood in relationship to the junk factor that I mentioned. So, we can talk about understanding of the relationship between risk and return. So, what are the two key concepts of finance? One, we talked in the beginning, it was time value for money. We talked about time value for money, that the fact that a safe rupee is worth more than a risky rupee. So it's better to talk about a bird in hand than two in the bush. So, a safe rupee is better than a risky rupee. That is the time value for money. Secondly, we talked about the trade-off between risk and return. There is a definite relationship, more the risk, more the return, but this is the central theme of trying to understand the investment decision-making process. Time is paramount to understand how much time will you take, how much time will you actually need to uh, be able to understand the value for money that you have in your hands or in your pocket, or you're running after a rupee that's really not there, so it's really not safe. So, I normally tell people who are really very excited about improving their, um, their worth or increasing their wealth or doubling their rupee worth, the simplest and easiest way to double your rupee is by folding it and you'll have two of them. So, it's not a good idea to look after risky rupees, risky dollars, so we must understand safety first. And then we must understand the trade-off between the investment decision-making process and how returns and how risk are correlated and how much the cost you have to pay as far as returns are concerned, considering risk. There is a word called risk that you must understand makes the difference between savings and investment. In one of the earlier lectures, we talked about using rupees as a means of either consuming them immediately as soon as you earn them, or you can save them, or you can invest them. 
Investing then would be talking about returns on investments or return on the yields. When we talk of returns, we are actually talking about holding period returns. When we're talking about returns, we're talking about yield and capital appreciation. When we're talking about returns, we're also talking about compounding, not just simple. We're talking about compounding the effect. And when we're talking about returns, we're talking about compound annual returns. Bonds, particularly because in bonds you have coupons. And for every annual year passing, every 12 months you'll have two coupons, which would mean that you'll be able to reinvest the returns of one coupon of one semi-annual return into the next semi-annual returns. So you can talk about compounding as a much better way of uh, much better way of trying to understand the process of compounding compared to simple investing. So simple interest or simple returns would be lesser than compound. The compounding really gives you a wonderful uh, return on investment. If you do understand the holding period return, you will understand that it is independent of the passage of time. So we must understand that since it is independent of the passage of time, it should only be used to compare investments over identical time periods. जब भी हम रिलेशनशिप्स की बात करते हैं जब भी हम रेफरेंस की बात करते हैं जब भी हम रिलेटिव स्ट्रेंथ की बात करते हैं जब भी हम कंपैरिजन की बात करते हैं जब भी हम बेटर रिटर्न्स की बात करते हैं जब भी हम बेटर इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजंस की बात करते हैं तो हमने कंपैरेटिव स्टडीज के लिए सिमिलर प्रोडक्ट्स को मेजर करना द मेजरबिलिटी कैन ओनली बी इफेक्टिव इफ इट इज ऑफ द सेम प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द सेम रिटर्न in same time period so it is the holding period to turn is important as it is independent of the passage of time now consider the yield of an investment from interest or dividend consider the appreciation from a chance in the investment value so holding period returns ke upar aap determine karenge ki aapko yield kya aa rahi hai aur fir aapko pata chal jayega ki ye sari cheeze hain जिससे आपको रिटर्न्स में समझने में आसानी हो जाती है बिकॉज होल्डिंग पीरियड रिटर्न इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ पैसेज ऑफ टाइम आपने जितने पीरियड के लिए रखना है उतनी ही आपको रिटर्न आई सो यू मस्ट कंसिडर द होल्डिंग पीरियड रिटर्न कंसिडर द यील्ड ऑफ एन इन्वेस्टमेंट फ्रॉम इंटरेस्ट और डिविडेंट जब हमने कैपिटल अप्रिसिएशन की बात की थी तो उसमें कैपिटल गेंस की बात की हमने उसमें जब अपनी इनकम को सप्लीमेंट करने की बात की थी तो हमने बात की थी कि हम सप्लीमेंट कैसे कर सकते हैं इनकम और वो दो तरीकों से हो सकती थी एक तो जो आपको रिटर्न्स आने हैं हाउ रिटर्न्स एज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इंटरेस्ट या रिटर्न इन द फॉर्म ऑफ डिविडेंड तो ये होल्डिंग पीरियड के हवाले से बात थी अब जो टाइम वैल्यू ऑफ मनी हाउ आर वी गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ टाइम और how i be going to you know measure time in money terms or how are you going to evaluate this uh, the comparison of time and money so what do we do we try to understand time value of money as it being calculations overcome the shortcomings of the holding period the time value mein calculations overcome the shortcomings of holding period return ek to ye hame zarur samajhna chahiye dusra it permits a direct comparison ek direct uh, comparative study aap kar sakenge time value of money ki wajah se so it uh, permits you with a direct comparison between a particular sum today so you can compare a particular sum today with the amount of future future cash flow se ke aaj jo pehle maine baat ki aap se ke a rupee is valuable or a rupee is worth more which is a safe rupee than a risky rupee in the future so ye comparative study ke liye aapko zaruri hai ki aaj us rupee ki kya value bazaar ka we tend to look at inflation 
हैज अ मेजर कि कितनी है अगर एक सौ रुपये हैं और सौ रुपये की जो चीज़ आज आप बाय कर रहे हैं और अगर टेन परसेंट इन्फ्लेशन है तो यू नीड अ हंड्रेड एंड टेन रुपीज टू बाय द सेम थिंग अयर लेटर और इफ यू इफ यू आर अ टेन परसेंट इन्फ्लेशन वर एवर यू कैन गेट टूडे वो हंड्रेड इज गोइंग टू गेट यू लेसर अन ईयर लेटर तो उसको आपने देखना है कि आपकी होल्डिंग पीरियड रिटर्न चूंकि इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ टाइम है तो उसमें आपको रिटर्न क्या आ रही है इज इट वर्थ इन्वेस्टिंग मनी फॉर रिटर्न दैट्स नॉट गोइंग टू गिव यू अ हेयर ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन जब हमने बात की थी इन्वेस्टमेंट्स की तो सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज़ जो हमने डिस्कस की थी वो ये थी कि आप जब हम इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं जब हमने किसी चीज़ में भी इन्वेस्ट करना है तो हमने देखना यह है कि इज इट गोइंग टू बी वर्थ इन्वेस्टिंग और नॉट इज इट गोइंग टू बी एक्चुअली बी अ गुड आइडिया टू इन्वेस्ट इन समथिंग चाहे बॉन्ड्स की बात नहीं कर रहा फुटीज की बात नहीं कर रहा रियल इस्टेट की बात नहीं कर रहा हम सिर्फ बात करें इन्वेस्टमेंट्स की जब हम इन्वेस्टमेंट्स की बात करें तो हमने देखना ये है कि क्या हमें रिटर्न मिलेगा क्या उसकी इन्वेस्टमेंट से जो रिटर्न आएगा वो इतना है कि हमारी जितनी भी डिसीजन मेकिंग्स हैं दे बी वैल्यूबल एज फार एज टाइम वैल्यू ऑफ मनी इज कंसर्न सो we look at compound annual returns and what do we look in compound annual returns in compound annual returns the interest rate that satisfies the time value of money equation ye compounding se iske upar bada iska interesting impact hai on the returns so the interest rate that satisfies a time value of money equation ek to ye compound annual return se aapko milta so the number of compound periods per year can significantly increase the compound annual return meaning kya yeah, i hope you do understand maine fikr kiya tha semi annual coupon rates ka jab coupons ki baat hoti hai to hum discuss karte hain twice a year payments jab hum baat karte hain multiples of coupon rates ki to wo ho sakta hai ki isse bhi zyada ho we generally look at semi annual returns banks be semi annual returns dete hain bonds be semi annual returns dete hain but what about agar hamare paas aisa ek system developed hai ki jisme aapke paas zyada compounding ka factor maybe you've got two products lined up assuming assuming a compounding effect hai तो एक आपने लेट्स ज्यूम जनवरी में आपने बॉन्ड खरीदा और एक आपने बॉन्ड खरीदा है अप्रैल में तो जो जनवरी में खरीदा अब आप ज्यूम कर लें कि वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट बॉन्ड्स विद एवरी टाइम हैविंग द यील्स इन जनवरी एंड जुलाई मैं आपको एक हाइपोथेटिकल एग्जाम्पन बता रहा हूँ यू माइट है बॉन्ड्स जिसमें एक आपकी मेचोरिटी जाएंगी जनवरी एंड जुलाई में और दूसरे बॉन्ड्स में अगर आपकी अप्रैल एंड अक्टूबर में अगर आती हैं तो अगर ये सिक्स मंथली जस्ट कैलकुलेट विथ अक्टूबर सिक्स मंथ फ्रॉम अप्रैल अप्रैल में जून जुलाई अगस्त सितंबर ओके सो यू हैव अप्रैल एंड अक्टूबर एंड इफ यू हैव जुलाई एंड जनवरी यूल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू विल हैव क्वार्टरली कंपाउंडिंग इम्पैक्ट ऑन योर इन्वेस्टमेंट तो आपने जो रिटर्न जनवरी में आया आपको वो आपने रीइन्वेस्ट कर दिया फिर अप्रैल में आया रीइन्वेस्ट कर दिया जुलाई में आया रीइन्वेस्ट कर दिया अक्टूबर में आया रीइन्वेस्ट इन्वेस्ट सो टेक्निकली स्पीकिंग ऑफ टू बाय एनुअल और सेमाई एनुअल रिटर्न विल बी हैविंग फोर क्वार्टरली रिटर्न्स टू बी री सो वॉट आई वॉज जस्ट टेलिंग यू नंबर ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग पीरियड पर ईयर कैन सिग्निफिकेंटली इन्फ्लुएंस दी कंपाउंड एनुअल रिटर्न इट्स जस्ट अ पॉसिबिलिटी बट Let's not get carried away with compounding. Compounding is a bada, you know, there's a heart beats faster, blood pressure levels raise. बहुत ज़्यादा compounding से पैसा बहुत जल्दी आता है आपको. बहुत जल्दी पैसा आता है. But longer duration में इसके returns phenomenal होते हैं. मैंने पहले भी कहा था आप एक chess board ले लें जिसमें चौसठ खाने हैं, sixty four squares, put one grain of rice. in the first square and i can assure you you will not find enough rice in the country to put it on the 64th square because of the effect of compounding 
So, you must look at the risk aspect as well. Paisa kamana to sab ko acha lagta hai, par risk koi nahi lene ko tiyar. So you need, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Kuch khona padta hai, kuch hasil karne ke bhi liye. So if you are planning to get rich quick, which is wrong, let's talk about getting rich. There is a risk involved as well. So what is risk? A chance of a loss. Loss pehle dekhna hai, profit baad mein dekhna hai. Loss hamesha pehle sochein. Ye ek basic ghalti hai jo hum nahi sochte, jiske baare mein loss ke, loss ko hum consider hi nahi karte. हम लॉस उसको करते हैं कंसीडर जहां प्रॉफिट में लॉस कमी हो गई तो वो हम लॉस कंसीडर करते हैं बट लॉस एक्चुअली मींस लॉस ऑफ प्रिंसिपल अमाउंट दैट हैज टू बी अंडरस्टूड एंड रिस्क इज इनसेपरेबल फ्रॉम टाइम रिस्क कैन हैपन एट एनी टाइम किसी वक्त भी रिस्क हो सकता है इट्स नॉट अ बिग डील कैन हैपन एनी टाइम एंड नॉट नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स सो यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड टू रिस्क अगर ब्रेक इवन है तो ब्रेक इवन वो पॉइंट होगा जहां पे डिसाइड होना है कि आपको गेन होना है या लॉस होना है अ ब्रेक इवन वुड मीन वेदर यू गोइंग टू मेक अ लॉस और नॉट विल टॉक अबाउट दिस अ लिटिल बिट लाइक बट वर्चुअली वर्चुअली ऑल इन्वेस्टर्स आर रिस्क वर्स स्पेशली विद सिग्निफिकेंट सम्स ऑफ मनी डर लगता है नुकसान से डर लगता है हारने से डर लगता है हमारे इन बिल्ट होता है हमने जीतना है हमने प्रॉफिट ही करना है ना हमने कभी लूज करना है ना पैसा लूज करना है ना कभी मैच लूज करना है हमने सिर्फ जीतना है हमने सिर्फ पैसा कमाना है इसकी वजह से जो हमारा एटीट्यूड है विन विन का नेवर टू लूज ऑलवेज टू विन का दिस इज समथिंग दैट इज मेकिंग अस फील बैड अबाउट आर इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन वी मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट देर इज अ चांस ऑफ अ लॉस We must understand that risk is inseparable from time. We must understand that there is a certain break-even point where we will be deciding where is the loss going to begin from and where is the point at which we will make a profit, the break-even. Pehle mein abhi aap se zikr kiya tha ki mein break-even ka thoda sa aap se baat karunga. To jab break-even ki baat karte hain, to jab aap te investment ki hai, to there is a cost. If you are producing something, if there is a product, तो उसकी एक कॉस्ट है उस कॉस्ट में उसकी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग है उसमें फाइनेंशियल कॉस्ट है उसमें एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कॉस्ट है उसमें मार्केटिंग कॉस्ट है उसमें सारी कॉस्ट निकाल के तब एक ब्रेक इवन कॉस्ट होती है जैसे कि अगर आप सौ रुपए की कोई प्रोडक्ट बना रहे हैं तो हो सकता है उसके ऊपर पच्चीस रुपए ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज इज एडेड ऑन इट एज एक्सपेंड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एक्सपेंसिस सो इट मीन्स दर ब्रेक इवन विल नॉट बी वन हंड्रेड इट शैल बी हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज उसके बाद आपका प्रॉफिट शुरू होगा तो अगर मैं इन्फ्लेशन की बात करता हूं तो इन्फ्लेशन का आई इंसिस्ट हमेशा पर्सनली फीलिंग दैट यू मस्ट इनकोपरेट ऑल द इन्फ्लेटरी अफेक्ट दिस इन्फ्लेशन कैन अफेक्ट श्योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट प्रॉफिट एंड ब्रेक इवन सो हंड्रेड रुपीज टूडे आई मैंशन इज नॉट हंड्रेड रुपीज टूमोरो एंड ईयर आफ्टर एंड द ईयर आफ्टर it will deteriorate i said risk is there the sure rupee will not grow as quick as inflation is rising so we must understand the tar break even our profitabilities will begin once we get ahead of inflation agar aap is cheez ko samajh jaye so you will understand what you get by investing it financial institutions and what you should be actually getting does it make sense does it make sense to put it into an institution where maybe you'll get a 1% return or a 2% return or a 3 what good is that going to be yes i do agree something is better than nothing something of course is better than nothing but we can do that in a better way aapko 2% ya 3% ya 4% mil raha पर क्या फायदा कि वो आगे जो लैंडिंग हो रही है वो आगे 10, 15, 20 परसेंट पे हो रही है तो समबडी कैन लैंड फॉर सच ग्रेट रेट्स वाई कैन दे गिव यू सच ग्रेट रेट्स तो दैट्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन लैंडिंग एंड बोरिंग द स्प्रेड दैट मेक्स द प्रॉफिटेबिलिटीज फॉर फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट दिस वी अंडरस्टूड दैट वी हैव टू लुक एट इट एज बींग 
virtually understandable as all investors with large sums of money are risk averse. The significant amounts of monies that are involved, they know that if a loss ho gaya, they'll really be dipping into their piggy banks in a big way. They'll, you know, burn a hole in their pockets. So, we understand the risk ko pehle samjhe. Kisi stage pe, kabhi bhi is jis ko undermine na karein. Investments is a risky business. So, if you can overcome risk, if you can understand risk, and if you can understand there is a chance of a loss prior to a chance of a profit, then we will be able to make more money than we actually do. Stock market generally two factors fuel karte hain. Ek greed or ek fear. We are so greedy. You were so fearful. Ye hum panic karte hain and excite ho jate hain at the minor, uh, the minutest of issues. We'll see um, a dip in, in, uh, in the index or a rise in the index at the drop of a hat. Zara sa kuch ho jayega, we'll sell. Which acha ho jayega, we'll start buying. But we don't see that activity happening on the roads in market. The panic aa gaya hai. Shares ki teemte hain, they're plummeting, sinking, going down. But jin products ki wo prices aap shares mein reflect kar rahe hain, the cheaper rate to be sold, products to usi rate pe market mein bikri hoti hain. It's the inability of people to understand risk. And it is the inability to understand that risk is inseparable for time, from time. So if we can get over risk, if we can get over a fear of loss, fear of loss is very good. If we fear of loss, then we will probably take a lot violent decisions in our investment decisions. Ko. So that is being more pragmatic, we understand that risk has to be accepted as part of the investment decision process and profit is also part of the investment decision process. So, to understand risk, we must understand that these investment decisions have to be taken into account, taking effect both whether risky or both whether uh, looking at the profitability aspect. Risk ko aap rule out mat ki jiye. Ye zehen mein rakhiye. Mainne abhi aap se junk bonds ki baat ki. The junk bonds mein high yields hongi. Jab high yields hongi, to utna hi hai high risk hoga. So, people are there who would want to invest significant sums of money in junk bonds because there is going to be phenomenal rise. And we have actually seen that happening in stocks very recently. Stocks mein humne dekha hai, phenomenal changes company What happened is that maybe they were able to strike it rich because of land. We talked about penny stocks. So if I tell you about penny stocks or junk bond, it's almost the same thing. So penny stock was referred to in a very earlier lecture that penny stocks are the ones that are very shares. Hain. Or wo bohot hi saste isli hain ke there is no value in it. So if you invest any amount of money in it, or if ki ek aur significant hiya bhi ke par value jo hai, usse bohot discount pe wo sell ho rahe hote. So you can buy them. Now the impact is that they can go bankrupt. There is nothing in the balance sheet. There are no cash flows. The business is not running. But what happened one day? One day somebody realized, or oh, the land got such valuable appreciation that from a penny stock it became into really Income generating stock. Yeh ho sakta hai. Junk bonds mein bhi aise ho sakta hai. Junk bond actually kyu float kiya jata hai? Junk bonds is liye float kiya jata hai. Ke ek aise ko product launch kar rahe hai. Jis ki wajah se unhe paisa chahi. Example mein aapko quote karta hai. Okay. Let's say ke ek company ne ek aisa product launch kiya hai. They're going into mining. So they've got maybe, uh, they've leased out a mountain from the government. And their geological surveys say that there is real, you know, gems in it or gold in it or whatever precious metal in it. But they don't have the resources to 
you know, mine or dig it or excavate it. And maybe it's a good company. Company into oil or company into chemicals. Koi achhi company hai or they found this all. Maybe they were laying pipelines and they found that yeah, this mountain can be an excellent place to dig in for precious metal. Now, to get all the money, they issue bonds. Obviously, since there is a risk factor, there's no guarantee they can even find a single nugget of gold in it or a tiny particle of any precious metal. Nobody is going to trust them with their money because it's not their field and nobody's seen any precious metal there or any gemstones in it to be shown. So they're not satisfied with the pocket full of uh, or the palm or the fist full of gold that you're showing. You could have bought it from anywhere. But you could maybe take a chance because they're offering you phenomenal returns on the bond. Now, in doing that, they're actually doing or luring you to lend them money at a higher percentage interest rate than normal. Let's say the going rate of a bond yield is maybe 9%. They might be offering you something like 27%, this three times normal or maybe 50%. And maybe people would, would take a chance. Let's take a chance and if you make it, you'll get in a lot of money. Now that can happen or it may not happen. There is a probability that you may not get that return. Now, there is also a probability that you may not get your principal amount as well because the company will go bankrupt if they find nothing there because there are going to be payments to be made and how much can they sell rocks for. So maybe they might end up getting into bankruptcy because they haven't found any gold or precious metal or gemstones. That probability is there, but if they do, you strike rich. Then they'll be in a position to pay you off as much as they promise. They can, you know, put the money where the mouth is. Probability is that you can earn a lot of money. That is what a junk bond is. This happened. This is not a story. This actually happened in one of the Western countries, developed countries, emerged world leader companies. They sold off a, um, a junk bond for a product. The same reference that I'm giving you, they said there's gold in a mountain that they were excavating for coal. And they showed video footage of that mountain and you could actually see gold and people invested heavily into it. Now they got all the money, they got all the money that they could want and then what happened? Eventually people found that they found what? They found that there was no gold. In fact, there was just a paint that the company had done to befool the people. So maybe they just spray painted gold into the rocks and given the impact or the impression there was gold that could be seen on the walls of the caves and people bought those junk bonds like mad. So this was pure, you know, this was pure conning somebody. It was really not a fair deal at all. There was, there was, you know, you could smell a rat from day one, but they fooled the people very successfully and vanished with the money. So junk bonds can do this. Junk bonds, you'll have junk bonds or junk shares that can make you phenomenally rich or make you uh, poorer as well. When you've been talking about risk, we must understand what we are getting into. When we talk about risk, we must understand that junk bond is not the real place to invest or penny stocks is really not the place to invest, but there is a probability that if you take a risk, you might gain extraordinary returns as well. Now, when we talk about risk, we also understand that we talked about a break-even point which I just recently, a few minutes ago, talked about being the exact place where you'll be able to decide where you are going to get a profit or get it lost. Now, do you remember, just think, when we talked about shares, we talked about investing in companies and then putting in a stop loss order in which you'll be deciding 
this is where I'm going to take a loss and beyond that I'm not willing to take any loss. So aap aise orders place karte the market ka jo lecture tha market mechanics ka ke you buy a stock which would be worth let's say rupees 20 per share and then you see it rising and then you put an order for stop loss that if the stock starts falling back to rupees 20 sell it off is not willing to take a risk at all or you are going to find that this is my break even i'm not going to take a loss at all so break even points are recognized it's not a big deal aapko pata hoga ki ye mera break even point hai aur yahan pe main profit ya loss le sakta hu so aap apni strategies us risk ke hawale se adopt kar sakte hain aur fir aap dekhte hain ki kaun si cheez aisi hai jo aapne karni hai jo aapke liye profitabilities mein convert kar denge loss ko aapne paramount rakhna hai you must understand that we are talking about losses risk in return with profits as well so when we talking about risk we must understand that risk is there kisi stage pe bhi koi bhi agar aapko keh raha hai ki investment process is risk free is not telling you the true side of the picture is not showing you the actuality risk is there the chances of losses are there but just recently we're discussing and in, instead of investing in the stock market it's better to set up a project but i don't think that's even a wiser decision because projects can fail as well so if projects can fail it's as bad as losing money in the stock market what we are doing when we're investing monies in a corporation's bond or monies in a stock is that we are actually lending money or buying a stake in a project so you could become part of a project and take the risk or set up a project and take the risk but here we are focused on risk related to bonds and risk related to stock so let's talk about risk in bonds we talked about interest rate risk we talked about default risk we talked about rise in interest rate making your yields go down and vice versa the risk is there or talking about default risk in which your interest becomes a story in fact it's going to be difficult for you to get your principal amount back as well risk hai risk rahega aur risk ko agar humne samajhna hai to hume dekhna ye hai ki risk in ke alawa bhi hai sovereign risk bhi ho sakta hai getting ahead with risk is going to be important for us to understand because risk hi wo cheez hai jisko humne dekhna hai ki kaun se factors hain risk ke jinse hum ye sari cheeze apne aap ke apne aap ke liye behtar kar sakte hain that we are able to understand risk as being a better component to understand as far as investments are concerned let me check another thing for you now when we talked about risk i talked that it is inseparable from time i talked that risk is there and it's got a lot to do with risk and return so you must understand that there is total risk in investing i don't deny that but then the return is greater than just putting money under your pillows or under your mattress or keeping it in a cookie jar so total risk is complete variability of investment result अगर हम देखें कि टोटल रिस्क है क्या तो वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट टोटल रिस्क कैन बी पार्टिशन इन टू डाइवर्सिफाइबल और अनडाइवर्सिफाइबल रिस्क वी कैन पार्टिशन इट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड इट एज बींग टू डिफरेंट रिस्क मार्केट प्लेस क्या करती है द मार्केट प्लेस जब हम मार्केट प्लेस की बात करते हैं तो हम बात कर रहे हैं स्टॉक मार्केट की अगर मार्केट प्लेस की बात कर रहे हैं तो हम बात कर रहे हैं बॉन्ड्स की मार्केट प्लेस इज अ प्लेस that can reward in fact only rewards undiversifiable risk risk total risk undiversifiable risk diversifiable risk ye hari cheeze hame pata hongi to hum kuch meaningful returns le sakte hain market place ke bare mein jab bhi baat hogi to hum baat kar rahe hain stock market ki commodities ki ya bonds ki sari cheeze trade hoti hain market मार्केट की बात हो रही तो हम बात कर रहे हैं फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स सो डाइवर्सिफाइबल रिस्क 
یا ان ڈائیورسیفائیبل رسک یا ٹوٹل رسک یا صرف رسک باٹم لائن یہ ہے کہ یہ ساری چیزیں رسک سے ریلیٹڈ ہیں نو پین نو گین ونس اگین دیر از نو سچ تھنگ ایز اے فری لنچ وی نیڈ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ دیز آر تھنگس ایسوسیٹیڈ ود انویسٹمنٹ پروسیس وی مسٹ انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ دیز آر تھنگس دیٹ آر گوئنگ ٹو میک یو اور میک یو میک منی اور میک یو لوز منی ہم انویسٹمنٹس کی باتیں کر رہے ہیں ہم سیونگس کی باتیں نہیں کر رہے ہم کنزمپشنس کی باتیں نہیں کر رہے ہم لاس لینے کی باتیں کر رہے ہیں دیر از نو سچ انویسٹمنٹ ایز اے لاس ایور لاسز پہلے رسک پہلے گین بعد میں جو امپورٹنٹ چیز سمجھنے کی ہم سب لوگوں کو کہ رسک کے بغیر انویسٹمنٹس نہیں ہوتی اف یو بائنگ ریئل اسٹیٹ دیر از چانس دیر از رسک سو رسک از ان اوائڈیبل پلیز انڈرسٹینڈ ریڈ مائی لیپس رسک از ان اوائڈیبل دیر ہیز ٹو بی سرٹن اماؤنٹ آف رسک when we talking about investment so what am i telling you that there is a direct relationship between expected returns and unavoidable risk i just said it i'll say it again risk is unavoidable and there is direct relationship between expected return and unavoidable risk yes risk can be avoided risk can be minimized but let's talk about risk investment and risk investment doesn't guarantee a return also unnecessary risk doesn't warrant any additional return but ye factors hame dekhne hain so i leave you here to think about risk i leave you here to you know scratch your brains i leave you here to think that investments is risky risk is unavoidable yes we must understand that there is a direct relationship between expected returns and unavoidable risk risk doesn't mean they'll go to get much better return risk doesn't guarantee you a return at all but risk is there there's no point in lying there's no fun in trying to deceive people risk ke baghair koi cheez nahi hai risk ke baghair investments ho hi nahi sakti lekin investments karenge to return hoga thank you very much